Hello, and welcome to my talk, Creating a Multi-Channel Wireless Speaker System, a mishmash of digital signal processing, embedded systems, and Julia. I'm Elliot Saba. Let's begin. I like sound. However, as you can see, I have a wide variety of different kinds of speakers, and unfortunately, only this old receiver to power them. I have heterogeneous speakers, but I have homogeneous signals. Plus, I hate wires. So, what can we do about this? Over-engineer it. We're going to take our receiver, which is currently connected to all of these different speakers. We're going to get rid of all those, and instead just have wireless connections from a receiver to all of these speakers, each one being a different channel, or even just different kinds of speakers for the same channel. This is going to be a much better system, although it's going to be quite a bit more work. But that's why we're here. We're going to architect the system to use a Raspberry Pi 0W for each speaker, along with this Hi-Fi amp hat that I'm able to get off Amazon for both of these for less than $50, including the power supply. As an overview of the system, we're going to be building a distributed wireless system that's going to run code on these Raspberry Pi 0Ws to allow me to customize the audio output that's coming from each speaker. I plan to hook this up with a reference microphone that will allow me to create a kind of profile for each speaker in order to send the optimal frequencies through each different speaker housing. Each device will apply those individual filters, and the overall latency must be low. In order for this whole thing to work, our key challenge is going to be synchronizing all of the individual devices. Our system is operating at 48 kilohertz. The time delay between each sample is going to be about 21 microseconds. And because our channels are split across devices, that means that if we have slippage in one device relative to the others, say a left channel versus right channel, our ears are going to be able to pick it up pretty easily. So I came up with a couple of different strategies to try and ameliorate this issue. The first is willful ignorance. Each device has its own clock. How much can they really drift over time? After experimentally determining that it was about 300 milliseconds per hour, I realized this was absolutely unacceptable. No bueno, I need a different strategy. Number two is to do the classic open source steal someone else's work approach. For this, I Googled around and saw that IEEE 1558 looks pretty good. It achieves very good synchronization. The issue, however, is that it requires hardware support, and it's usually Ethernet-only support. Because there's no hardware available on the Raspberry Pi 0W, this is not going to work. However, strategy number three can steal some ideas from strategy number two and then just throw statistics at the problem. The key insight is most of the sources of round-trip time increase are meaningless. It's either the CPU processing some other request, the kernel adding in a little bit of extra latency, etc. We really only care about all of the minimum time round trip time estimates. And so we can simply throw away the top chunk of round trip time results and then fit this to a slowly moving clock skew estimator. In practice, this synchronizes to within about 100 microseconds, which is maybe less than five samples. Not bad, certainly good enough for our work. Let's follow the flow of sound through our proposed system. We start with some capture sources that are going to be simply mixed together on the capture node, usually a Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to encode this with Opus, which will help save us significant bitrate issues when transmitting to all of the nodes. This is going to send over a network socket, and our happy little packets will get sent over the vicious internet. They'll be received by a network socket on the receiver side, decoded, sent into a mixer that is going to be timestamp aware, filtered, and then finally sent out to the DAC. Now, in order for the mixer to be timestamp aware, it needs to know the difference in timestamps between the local host time and the capture node master time. In order to do that, we add in a time client and a time server that can communicate back and forth, sending those round trip time packet estimates. From that, we also add in a packet cache in the, in the event that our hapless little packets are devoured by the vicious internet, we need to be able to retransmit them quickly. We don't want to have to go back and re-encode things, so we just add in a packet cache. No biggie. Now, mapping all of these pieces of the system to pre-existing packages, we end up with something that's going to be using port audio, sampled signals, Opus, ZMQ, etc., etc., etc. There are actually multiple implementations that I've done here. 
one in C, one in Julia for the receiver side. That timely mixer block is going to be mixing with what I call an unstable clock. The reason why this is important is because of this time synchronization issue. When we're capturing audio buffers, they're being captured and timestamped, and we actually extend the sampled signals.jl package to have a uh, buffer type that has these kind of absolute signals so that we can do arithmetic on time and not get too confused about what indices inside of these buffers we need to be pulling from. When we're pulling buffers from the capture card, they come in at very nice integer multiples of the buffer size, like this. However, when we're mixing them on the receiver side, when there is a clock skew correction due to that time server suddenly realizing, ah, we have slipped by a sample or two, there is now a space in between these two buffers. What do we do? Now, our assumption is that clock skew changes are going to be very slow moving things. What this means is that our buffers are going to drift from each other and we're just going to claim that it's going to be at most one sample side to side. This gives us about 100 samples per second of leeway in order to correct for clock skew, and this is more than enough. Doing this kind of adding an extra sample or taking away sample is almost laughably easy. We can literally just interpolate a single sample or overdub two samples together by mixing them together. Not a problem. Port audio is going to give us accurate stream timestamps on the receiver side when we're actually outputting stuff to the DAC. However, the best way to get these timestamps is through its callback API. And it calls this callback on a different thread than Julia's. This is a no-no. It causes seg faults in Julia if you use any piece of the runtime during a, a callback that's invoked by a foreign thread. And so we're going to whip out a C shim library to deal with sending audio to port audio. The first implementation, the proof of concept, had the transmitter written in Julia and the receiver written in C. This was made so that we could run it immediately on ARMv6 hardware, just to make sure that everything could run in real time. It used UDP6 multicast packets instead of ZMQ, and it handled unreliable transport by both retransmitting packets when something was lost and recreating old packets with Opus's forward error correction. C's compile times are a huge boon for these Raspberry Pi Zero Ws. However, the development time was fairly high, and writing sticks code in C is not fun. In the end, this is not what we're all here for. So let's move on to implementation 2.0 with both sides written in Julia. This, as mentioned before, is not running on ARM v6 yet. It's awaiting future binary builder support for things like ZM.Q and port audio, but it does run on ARM v7L. It extends sampled signals.jl buffers to have absolute timestamp support so that we can index into them in our mixer. It also switches to using PubSub from ZMQ instead of UDP6 multicast. We're hoping to use ZMQ Dish Radio once support lands in Julia, but that's going to take a little bit of work inside of ZMQ. It uses poor audio, but adds a CSHIM to do this real-time timestamped I.O. And uh, there's still a little bit more research to do on the best speaker calibration technique. However, good algorithms exist inside both DSP.jl and control systems identification.jl, so we're hopeful this will be pretty easy to implement. The proof of concept implementation is available at this repository under the JuliaCon 2020 tag. The full Julia implementation will be available at that repository in the fullness of time, along with instructions on how to deploy this to your very own set of Raspberry Pis to create your own multi-channel wireless speaker system. Thank you very much. Let's move to questions.